everybody, it's Susan Rashawn here, The Techie Mentor. I just want to take a moment to say thank you for stopping by my YouTube channel, The Virtual Assistant Tips, Tricks, and Advice channel, where I share all things virtual assistant every week with zero fluff, just the stuff that gets results. This week's topic is all about firing clients. So this isn't something that a lot of us plan for. Uh, but I think it's really important that we do because chances are it may happen to you once or, or more than once. I know uh, for me, because I was so hungry to start my business and take clients, I was just taking any client that had a wallet. And that's really not the best way to run a service-based business. You wanna make sure that the people that you're working with are the right people for you, and who's right for you may not be right for somebody else. So it's not about bad people, it's just about the right fit for you. So one of the things I think you really need to think about is maybe a, a client exit strategy, right? We have an, an onboarding strategy, but what's an exit strategy for a client in case the time comes where you have to part ways. Now, normally when there's friction between yourself and a client, it's it's not just you, it's also them. And you're not doing yourself or them any favors by keeping them as a client when they're not a good fit for you. So one of the things you need to look at, first of all, is your client agreement. Okay, in your client agreement, there's probably a clause that states um, what your uh, agreement is when you wanna part ways. So for instance, it would say 30 days notice or 14 days notice or seven days notice. You need to be aware of what that clause is in your agreement. Second of all, make sure that you have that in your business policies document and it's something that you talk about on your kickoff call when you onboard a new client. Make sure they understand if they decide they want to, to leave the relationship, that this is the window of time they need to give notice in, 30 days, 14 days, seven days, whatever that, um, whatever that number is for you. But make sure it's in your agreement, make sure it's in your business policies document as well, and make sure that clients understand that. Now, again, that's worst case scenario. Now, you may have times when there's conflict between you and a client, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Maybe it's a miscommunication, a misunderstanding, uh, maybe the, the ball was dropped either by yourself or your client. Those are the kinds of things that you can decide if you want to mend that fence and make it right for them. What I'm talking about here is when it's definitely not a good fit. You know, you're like two magnets, but you're, you're repelling versus attracting. It's not a good fit for you, it's not a good fit for the client, so it's time to part ways. And so once you understand what that window is, that, that notice that you need to give or they need to give to you, how are you gonna handle this? So obviously if the client's coming to you um, to part ways, that's different, but what if you need to go to a client and, and make the break? How are you going to handle this? So these are things you're gonna to want to think about. Again, that client exit strategy. Um, are you going to do it by phone? Are you going to do it by email? Um, do you offer refunds for um, any services, um, you know, or any hours, I should say, that are unused if you sell retainers? What does that look like um, for you? For me, if a client and I were, were parting ways and it was, a lot of times it's a mutual decision. It's just up to one person to make the first step. And you know, how do you know if, if it's not a good fit for you? I mean, there are red flags, right? There's usually red flags when you go to, to work with a client, but maybe you ignore those for whatever reason. I did that. Um, maybe you didn't trust your gut to say, no, you probably don't wanna work with this person. Again, not a bad person, just not a good fit for you. And so if you ignore those, you're gonna end up sooner or later going to have to either um, fire them, I hate that word, but you know what I mean, exit, or they're going to do it to you. So how are you going to handle that? Email, phone call, and so what I did was I had, I created an email. And in the email, it was just basically a template that stated, um, you know, based on whatever, uh, I feel that this is not the best relationship for you and me. Now you have to determine what you want to say. I'm all about transparency. It is what it is. You might as well just deal with it, right? So you want to put it in, in words that are professional and that clients know that this is just um, not a good fit for you and probably is not a good fit for them. So how do you word that? Well, you wanna make it yourself, you wanna put it in your own words, but you wanna make sure that it's clear that you want to part ways. Now, I'm not about leaving them high and dry. That's not professional. Not only that, it'll ruin your reputation. So you wanna have that exit strategy include how do you 
you know, exit them out of your business? Do you help them find somebody new? Just because they're not a good fit for you doesn't mean they're a bad client. They're probably better suited for somebody else. And so what you want to do is figure out, do you want to help your, your, your client right now that is exiting? Do you want to help them find somebody? Um, do you help train the new person? I mean, those are all things that you have to think of. Remember, my motto is your business, your choice. It's not cookie cutter. Do what feels right for you. So when it comes to exiting out of a relationship with a client, how are you going to do it? By phone or by email? I recommend that you have some type of script that you can read if you're gonna do it by phone. If you're uncomfortable with that, then do it by email, but make sure you get confirmation from them that they understand. Know what your exit clause is in your agreement. Is it 14 days? Is it 30 days? Now remember, if it's 30 days and you give kind of notice to them, you still have to work with them for the next 30 days. And, and that may not be the most comfortable situation. At that point, you can choose to just give them back their money and let them go on their way, help them find somebody else. So for each exit, you know, you may have to look at what works best for this particular client. Do you want to refund them? Do you want to work with them until the end of that agreement, right? The 14 days, the 30 days, whatever that number might be. And do you want to help them find somebody else? Try not to burn a bridge if at all possible. Because again, it's all about being professional. And for those of you who have management um, experience and you've had to fire people, it's not the same, right? You're not firing somebody from a job. They have other uh, clients, for instance, or they have other income. They're paying you right? You're not paying them. So if you have fired people in the past, it's a different mindset. I know I was in management. I unfortunately had to fire people. But when it came to firing a client, I was thinking like an employee thinking, oh my God, if I do this, they're not going to have any money. But that's silly. They're paying me. <laughs> so you want to make sure that you also have something in your plan of how you're going to make up the income that you're losing by letting go of a client. So you're going to want to make sure that you have some type of a method to um, replace that income as quickly as possible. If you're if you're list building, you have a list, or you have, um, you know, raving fans. This would be the time that you want to send them an email and let them know, hey, I've got space in my business. Um, you know, reach out to your current clients and let them know, hey, you have any referrals? I've got some space in my business. You know, I love referrals, and that's another conversation. So. I guess the biggest point here is you need to plan for an exit strategy with a client, having to fire them, whether they fire you or you fire them. The other thing I want you to think about um, is once you part ways, what do you do with their stuff, right? If you have their files or their, you're in their Dropbox and you've got their passwords, you wanna make sure that your strategy includes getting rid of that stuff because you don't wanna be liable for that. You wanna get rid of it. You know, if you're connected to Dropbox, folder, Dropbox folders with your clients, then make sure that you remove yourself from that. Um, if you have their passwords and whatnot, make sure they know that you have removed that. If you have logins for yourself into their tools, make sure that you take yourself out. So make sure that you're, you're removing yourself from their business as you exit their life and they exit yours. So hopefully this has given you some ideas on um, creating an exit strategy if and when the time comes that you need to fire a client. And I know a lot of us don't wanna think about this, but it may happen at least once in the life of your business. Unfortunately, it happened a couple times uh, for me, but the reason was is because I didn't listen to my gut when I hired a client or, or started working with a client, I should say. Um, I should have known that they weren't a good fit and I should have never taken on a client. So this is another thing. If you know at the beginning of a relationship that it's not a good relationship, don't get in it and then you don't have to deal with the firing on the other side. I'd love to hear from you. Feel free to leave your, your comments and questions. Make sure you subscribe so you know um, what's next in either this video or this podcast series, podcast series. And I will see you guys next time. Thanks, bye.